Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports. On today's episode, we've got all of the coverage you need of the 2023 NWSL Draft. It's live. We're live. Everybody's live. We've got the first two round reactions for you all. I thank you all for joining us live in the chat make sure if you don't already please like follow subscribe at our youtube channel youtube.com slash attacking third leave us a comment we want to hear from you there's a lot of cool stuff happening tonight and we're going to talk (laughs) all about it lisa we're uh, in an undisclosed location in philly at the draft and uh just happy to be here with you bud so happy to be here happy to be experiencing this draft um live in person for the first time with the league in two years. That's crazy to think about, but it's so fantastic to see how many fans are here. There's a lot of, there's oh, yeah. a lot of people that came out in Philly. Um, oh, yeah. A couple people stopping us as we're walking around saying hi to us. So thank you to all those people. Shout out to Amy. Oh my we God. We have to give a shout out to Amy. She uh, gave us some cheesecake because she knew it was going to be a long night for us. So thank you so much, Amy. Uh, we haven't eaten it yet, but we will. And we appreciate it. So thank you very much. Uh, oh, we're, it's we're, good to be here. We're getting real close to cheesecake hours <laughs> here uh, at the draft and out attacking third. It's been a long day for so many, ourselves included. Um, but so much stuff was happening today on draft day i i think before we actually get into the picks a little bit we should maybe chat about um some earlier uh, news that happened whether it's the the trades that took place on this day jessica mervin addressing uh the media a little bit of a state of the league as we go into the 2023 regular season and we were all over the place we were we were at that press conference with commissioner berman and then made our way back here to the to the convention center to, to cover this draft. But even it feels like even coming out of, of that press conference with the commissioner directly, we started to hear rumblings and rumors about some things that were going to happen leading up into the draft. And we're talking just hours, like mere hours before this draft got kicked off at 6. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that was the rule heading into it for those that don't know at noon today, noon Eastern, um, trades stopped, all trades stopped, and they weren't allowed to be resumed until 6pm tonight when the draft started. However, trades that were made um, earlier this morning, that could have happened just not been announced yet. So that's kind of what we saw happening trickle in um, early this afternoon, uh, just a few hours before the draft, some crazy trades out there happening uh, for teams that wanted to go number one for teams that wanted to transfer some players around. We saw Orlando Pride send Maggie Doherty Howard midfielder to San Diego wave. So Doherty Howard uh, re- reunites with her former teammates and Taylor Korniak, Alex Morgan. Um, that is just one of the handful of big trades that, that happened earlier today, just before the draft. It's a, uh, it's, it's wild to think about, but there's something about having an in-person draft make its return for, for the league. And for folks who aren't aware, the drafts always were in-person events prior uh, to the arrival of COVID, unfortunately. And we've had virtual drafts the last two events. And I got to say, having the return of an in-person draft almost just sort of felt like an event in itself. Mm-hmm. And to sort of be in these in all of these corners mm-hmm. and these hallways and in all of these rooms talking about draft itself the potential moves that might be made there's a there was a great energy throughout the day today and it was really nice to to be able to be in person be in your yeah. home city yeah, Lisa, and, and, and get to sort of um you know contribute to, to, to all those those good vibes and all those good energies uh commissioner berman saying a lot of interesting things in in her um in her address to the, to the media state of the league uh Re-emphasizing um, how the league is currently in their uh, third phase now of their three-pronged approach to the joint team investigation in terms of uh, the NWSL ecosystem. So the consequences and uh, sanctions that were issued recently we talked about in the previous episode and how hopefully this sort of feels like perhaps a bit of a bookend to some of those uh well, really the last two years that we've been covering of this league. And so kind of looking ahead, and there's a lot of hope that was uh, heard that word uh, utilized a lot tonight, that there's a lot of hopefulness within some of the the energy that we've been witnessing and and been privy to in in this event. 
And I would I would agree with that. I think we've seen a lot of wide eyed yeah. <laughs> players and 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 draftees and their friends and their families as well. And and it's very very it's been very cool to see an absolute packed house for yeah. this for this event. Um, and it was cool to sort of have that state of the league in front of us because we got to to hear about uh, things like expansion and how there's still going to be some several weeks mm -hmm. before there's anything definitive around that uh, for 2024. Exciting uh, news about the salary caps increasing, uh, 1.375 million for these team salary caps, $600,000 uh, cap for allocation money as well. Maybe explains a little bit of why we saw so many of these numbers flying around for these trades walking into round one of the NWSL draft. And maybe that's where we start in terms of our reactions <laughs> for draft night tonight. I think we have to start there. I mean, it even started before then, earlier this week when we saw Angel City uh, making that trade for that number one pick. And it was rumored, it was talked about a lot, that they were going to go after the 18-year-old Alyssa Thompson, who's got two caps with the senior national team, uh, a forward in Thompson that's been playing in high school. She's, she's in high school, hasn't even made it to college yet, uh, but it, it came down to it. We're here at the draft. Angel City ends up getting that first round pick. They held on to it. That trade was not going anywhere from Angel City, and all the rumors were correct. Angel City goes after Alyssa Thompson, 18-year-old forward, um, hoping to make such a big difference in L.A. and at Angel City, a huge, a huge party on a school night for, for Thompson as she gets drafted. I loved the, the – we're talking about scenes a lot, trying to help set the, the picture here for those of you who are joining us live and, and virtually. Um, but it was cool to sort of see some of the celebrations coming out for some of these selections, whether they were actually here in person at the convention center or some of the video that we see for these players who are having their own small draft parties at home. And I don't, I don't know if I would consider Alyssa Thompson's draft party small. It was uh, back out home in California, and there was – uh, again, a, a lot of exciting components to it. it we saw uh, President Julia Herman there presenting the jersey to, to Alyssa Thompson as well. And um, Thompson, you know, obviously getting the chance to, to, to speak her first words as, as, as an all time, as, as, as a first time pro, excuse me, um, talked about how excited it, it is for her to get to play at home yeah. in California and in, front of, in front of her home state. It's very special. And the fact that she, was there right in Los Angeles at home for this draft and not able to be here. The fact that Angel City could go to her right for, and have the president present her with that jersey, that's very special. But that all happened before we, we entered today. There was also a lot of changes that happened during the draft. And, and that's what we see happen because heading into this one, uh, we knew that we were going to have one draft order. Um, and by the time six o'clock, six o five, six ten, six fifteen, a completely and we, different. Yeah, a completely different draft order, and that's exactly what we saw unfold today. It was almost like, <laughs> and uh, we're talking about hope, but it was almost like when Alyssa Thompson went number one for Angel City. It was almost like a little bit of false hope. We were just like, okay, this here's the draft. It's arrived. It's going to go as yeah. expected. Alyssa Thompson, number one to Angel City as previously reported. We had discussed it on episodes prior uh, if we thought that was, you know, a good move for Angel City to essentially make these tiered trades mm -hmm. with Gotham, with Portland in order to make that leap into the first slot to take this player. And we're like, great, this is going exactly as we had already chatted about. And then here comes pick number two. And we get a massive trade that's announced for Gotham FC, who was a part of those tiered trades alongside Angel City, making trades of their own to, uh, you know, get into the second pick overall because they were initially the team with the number one overall pick. That ended up going to Angel City after all of those moves and all of that money. Gotham sitting in at number two had received Yasmin Ryan as a part of this trade, traded with Orlando Pride to get it to number two. And then they go ahead and make another trade on draft day with Kansas City Current. Exciting, exciting stuff here, I think, if you're Gotham and if you're the Current. Uh, this was a massive trade. And, and for those that are Gotham fans thinking, oh, no, we had the number two pick. What was going to happen? They still had the number four pick at this point. So Gotham, Because of another trade. Yes. <laughs> like look, So many trades happening on the spot. But I think this Kansas City trade with Gotham um, – 
was massive to see because Gotham or Kansas City ends up sending Lynn Williams forward, U.S. national team. She was out all last year with a, a terrible hamstring injury. I think she played maybe a handful of games during the Challenge Cup. But Lynn Williams, U.S. Women's national team forward, is going to Gotham FC in exchange for that number two draft pick. And Kansas City then finds themselves runner-up in the NWSL championship just last year. They're supposed to be at the bottom of this draft pick, number two, and they go after Michelle Cooper out of Duke, the sophomore forward that decided after this year's College Cup when Duke made it to the final four in the College Cup that she was going to end her playing career collegiately and enlist in the draft for the NWSL and make a name for herself. She goes number two overall, not to Gotham, though, to Kansas City. I'm going to I'm going to vouch for us here. I'm going to speak up for us here at A3 because we did our mock draft yeah. ahead of a couple of things. We did our mock draft A ahead of this draft day and B ahead of the regist- the play registration deadline. So we were taking a little bit of a gamble there as most folks do when they make their their mock drives and we, we chatted a little bit about this how uh, when the deadline passed uh, for Monday for players to have their names Submitted. You and I saw hit that refresh button on January 10th. <laughs> and we saw Jenna Nyschwanger enter yeah. the picture for this player registration draft. And we thought, you know, hit the music, hit cue it up. By God, that's Jenna Nyschwanger's music. She's going to completely wreck everybody's mock draft. And then there were multiple trades that happened today on draft day. And that also, uh, you know, changed some things up in terms of in terms of the order. But to this point... In our mock draft, we're we're pretty solid in one and two. We were yeah. like, hey, we got. <laughs> I a, a, came <laughs> over to you and I was like, hey, we're two for two right now. Not with the teams by any means, but with the players. Yeah, yes. with players at those at those selections, one and two. So uh, Alyssa Thompson, uh, Michelle Cooper going number two, and Orlando Pride. We were very curious, I think, in terms of how they were going to, um, you know, utilize this pick because they had initially entered this draft with with the number two and number three pick. Then on draft day, only had that number three, uh, had that early number three pick in this first round. And at this point, there's still a ton of talent out there on that draft board. And it was like, who are they going to go with? Are they going to go with a Jenna Nyschwanger? Uh, are they going to go defensively? Who was going to be in this pick? So for number three, Orlando Pride with their selection, they ended up going with Emily Madrill. I love this pick for Orlando defender, Emily Madrill. She was formerly with Florida State University, uh, decided to forego her eligibility. She signed a contract with the NWSL as a professional. They put her on loan to Sweden. So she's been playing professionally in Sweden for the last year. And then her name was entered into the draft. And and when you look at what Seb Hines has on his roster currently at Orlando, uh, they need to shore up that back line. I mean, uh, Orlando had a really tough go around last year in, yeah. in the league. I mean, it just holes all over the place. And to get a player in Emily Madrill that not only is a top talent from FSU um, and understanding what she could do under that program at Florida State, but then to have the experience that she has playing professionally. Madrill's a player that can walk onto the pitch right now for Orlando and get minutes, slot into that back line seamlessly, right? Because she already understands the professionalism, what it's like to play at this level. I mean, this is a massive pick for Orlando and just the first of three Florida State University players to be drafted in that first round. I mean, they win right now for uh most number of players drafted out of their university. Yeah, not not sure if there's a clear winner of the first round draft at this moment, but it could be none of the clubs, but Florida State University. Yeah, exactly. In fact, uh, but uh, I was curious with one, two, and three going, you know, attacker, attacker, then defender, what yeah. was number four going to look like? And we have to chat a little bit about more, more trade fodder, Gotham FC. Uh, nearly trading themselves out of the first round, but not not exactly. They they ended up uh, making a trade with Racing Louisville FC, and Racing Louisville had an opportunity at, at number four to perhaps uh, select uh, a, a player to to help continue to build out and flesh out their roster, uh, but opted to listen to offers with Gotham and and swapped uh, positions there. So we had Gotham FC. Uh, now in the number four position to go ahead and make that selection. And I was eager to see, like, who was going to, uh, you know, be selected in this category, and it was Jenna Nyschwanger. 
Yes. I mean, this was a player that you just mentioned, Sandra, wasn't uh, initially on this registered draftees list, prospective players to be drafted. Uh, we were waiting for her to, to add her name to it. She's out of Florida State, a forward, a midfielder. Uh, she played five years at FSU and, and just her experience taking that team to college cup after college cup, uh, what she was able to do in that conference. I mean, this is a player for Gotham that they can slot into that attacking midfield role. I really think that's where she'll play, especially when you look at the upcoming year that that the United States women's national team has with the world cup. You, we know that Christy Mewis is most likely going to be on that roster. Knight Swanger is a, a player that can slot into that attacking 10 role, um, try to contribute up top. I mean, you look at if Yomano Mano that they have in the front line, Margaret purse, they've got speed. They need someone now with a little bit of technicality that can feed those balls through. Right. So many times we, we were watching Gotham matches last year in 2022 saying they've got so much individual talent, but how do we connect the lines? Why are are they not being able to build up from the defensive line through the midfield line to their forwards? And Jenna Nightswanger is the perfect player out of Florida State to give that to this Gotham team and have them build out a more fluid attack for them. Listen, I just think it's really, really impressive that Gotham made as many moves as they did within this draft. They were busy. They, they were, were incredibly busy. busy and somehow still make all of these moves and acquired not just the, the player that they were targeting in the draft, but players, uh, plural. So they're walking away with veteran pieces, right? A, a U.S. women's national team player and Lynn Williams and uh, Jenna Neischwanger, someone who was uh, you know, considered like a top, yeah. not even five, maybe top three pick um, going into this draft. So I think uh, Gotham looking – Looking pretty uh, exiting this uh, this draft day. Number five, Portland Thorns FC. They were involved in that big blockbuster trade, multi-team trade ahead of draft day uh, alongside Gotham, alongside Portland Thorns and Orlando Pride. Found themselves uh, bumped up into yeah. this first round draft in the fifth slot, and they went with Reyna Reyes out of Alabama. I was hyped for this pick. You'll love to see it. Second defender drafted in the top five. We love to see that see here it. at Attacking Third. First, we have Emily Madrill, number third, going to Orlando, and then uh, Reina Reyes, defender uh, out of Alabama. But she also plays higher up the pitch. This is a really, really versatile player. Matt Herman Trophy semifinalist, SEC Defender of the Year. She's notched goals for this Alabama team. Um, a college Cup, right? You look at the NCAA tournament and the experience that a player like Reyes has. Um, 23 wins, a career high, eight goals this year for Reyes throughout her college days because she was so much higher up the pitch. But the versatility of Reyes is really crucial. And I think that's what Portland is keying in on. The fact that they can utilize this player wherever they need her to be. And she's got the experience to do that. And to step up in those moments when she is in the box, it's a set piece and she can get on the end of it. I mean, the fact that Portland was able to wiggle their way into a top five pick and they end up doing that and then going with a national champion in Reina Reyes um, is fantastic. I mean, we talked about this during our mock draft in getting a player like Reyes, uh, specifically at Portland. Think of the player she's going to be Playing alongside Becky Sauerbrunn, Kelly Hubley, Megan Klingenberg, Sophia Smith, she'll be going up against in, in practice every day. The experience for Reyes is going to be incredible, incredible for her this year. Yeah, she's coming. Uh, she's coming off of that national championship uh, appearance, and and I know, I know that's that's what you meant because we're just like yeah, trying sorry, to consume. Appearance. We're yes. trying to consume so <laughs> much national champion appearance. Yeah, we're yes. trying to consume so much soccer right here. At one point, I, I know our brains are going like a mile a minute, but you know, I I, I was very enthusiastic about this pick because um, I I love to see. Um, you know, players make their way into this league. You know, it's a beautiful thing to witness um, someone essentially checking a box off of like their list yeah. of goals, right? Uh, you know, uh, achieving their dreams. And there's a really cool video out there of Raina Reyes in her draft party with her family. And I love that so much. I felt like I was watching like my family have a special moment. Shout out to my familia. Like I, I love watching this, uh, this Mexican international mm -hmm. um, go to an incredible club. Uh, very successful, very winning club. Um, and they're going to probably demand excellence immediately. So to sort of, you know, roll the dice and make the gamble uh, on, on a player, I think says a lot about um, Reyes and her uh, her ability and her ceiling. Um, and the fact that this club wants to try to continue to develop that, continue to develop that and, and have her contribute 
um, in Portland. I'm, I'm eager to see if they, if they they still actually see her all across that defensive line because she's someone with the ability to play higher yeah. um, in, into the midfield. But um, depending on how they have plans to utilize her, she could be a bit of a wild card factor, I think, for, for Portland. So uh, I love it. I'm excited to chat more about even more picks. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back to recap the rest of that first round. Gear up for the top of the table matchup. As defending champs Chelsea take on Arsenal. And that's going in. Oh, yes, it's going in. It's the Barclays Women's Super League Sunday on CBS Sports Network. Hey, we're back. That was a short one. But listen, we have to recap the rest of these picks. In the first round, we left you off with the number five pick in Reina Reyes. Let's go to number six, North Carolina Courage. Another team that we're going to be talking about probably through the remainder of this episode in this first round reaction and recap. Another team involved in some trades, but we have to talk about that and maybe a couple other picks. But in the number six selection, they went with a forward, Olivia Wingate out of Notre Dame University. What are your thoughts on this pick for North Carolina at number six? I'm going to be a little honest. This one was a bit of a surprise for me coming out of Notre Dame, but not because of uh, what this player achieved. She's an All-American, a two-time um, All-ACC selection player uh, from the Boston area. So she she talked about how she uh, grew up watching the Boston Breakers and, and cheering for that team. And now that she gets to play in this league, but I'm a little surprised at North Carolina picking her overall. Um, a, a player like this, um, when you look at what North Carolina has and what they've lost so far this year, uh, they lost to Binia in the front line. Um, they're looking to rebuild. Uh, they they also lost in a trade, Diana Ordonez, uh, which we will talk about. But oh, yeah. so the fact that Olivia Wingate out of Notre Dame is going to North Carolina, um, and this is the first because North Carolina ended up having four picks in that first round, um, and they choose to go with a player like this over a player maybe like Messiah Bright that we had – uh, notched much higher on our, our list like this. Penelope Hawking, another player out of Penn State that we had pushed higher on these lists. Um, I, I like this, though, for, for Sean Nahas. He clearly has something in mind that he is looking to build at North Carolina. And the fact that Olivia Wingate goes six overall, um, I'm excited to see kind of where her bar is and, and the standard that she can set at North Carolina playing alongside the roster that Nahas has compiled there. Listen, I think we're talking about North Carolina courage. We have to take a pit stop because we got to talk about the number seven selection for Chicago Red Stars before we talk about the courage again. But I think it's a good pit stop because I think the Chicago Red Stars helped us out because we get to say that we chose another player in our mock draft at this selection. We went with Penelope Hawking at number seven to go to the Chicago Red Stars and the Red Stars selected as such. Tacky player team. out of Penn State. This is your team, Sandra. Chicago, I want to know... Uh, what do you think about Penelope Hawking? I mean, forward out of Penn State, uh, fifth-year player, too. She's got experience in a couple different conferences. Are you happy with this selection from the Red Stars? I thought it was – I think you're looking at the board right now, and it's funny because I'm pointing in my head this is a White Sox hat. But <laughs> um, I, I think it's a good selection. I think when you're looking at this point, if you had that seventh pick in the first round, you're looking at – at this point, what's the best player available? And while I think there were some really strong forwards coming mm -hmm. into this draft class, I think Penelope Hawking offers something a little bit different compared to some of the other forwards yeah. out here, whether it's consistency or versatility. Um, and I think this is someone who probably see slotted along, along the line either way. And I yeah. think when you're looking at your roster as it stands right now, which is not a lot if you're Chicago, they're a little bit depleted in some certain areas. But Mallory Swanson is your everything right now. She's your generator. Mallory Swanson, you threw me off for a second. Yeah, it's yes, okay. Yeah. We got to get used For, to it. Formerly Mallory Pugh, yes. Mallory we got to get used to it, y'all. So Mallory Swanson, formerly Pugh, uh, needs some help because she's a little bit everything when it comes to their right. uh, attack. She's the generator, the facilitator. Um, she can assist and set you up, and she can knock them down and, and slot them away. Uh, she had an incredible season last year, but I think if – if the first two seasons in Chicago with uh, with Swanson, excuse me, has shown us anything, it's that this player can probably thrive even more if there's some extra channels and outlets for her yeah. to work with. And I think a player like Hawking 
can help provide that as well. So. She, she can. I mean, you look at a, a player like Penelope Hawking out of Penn State. She led the Big Ten in assists this year with 11, seven goals that she contributed herself. I think when you couple that alongside someone like Mallory Swanson, um, it's going to be a really nice compliment because Swanson is a player that can do so many things herself. But if she can let go of some of that pressure, um, even putting it on a rookie like Hawking, even just to feed her those balls, find that extra pass as Hawking does so well, um, it, it's fantastic. I'm excited to see kind of how they play alongside each other with uh, under Chris Petroselli, right? Is he going to stick with a three – front or maybe he'll go to a two front and and also it's a world cup year yeah mallory pews going to new zealand and australia yeah. or mallory swanson excuse me she's there right now so <laughs> so that's also maybe puts a little bit more pressure or hope on someone like a penelope hawking uh, yeah. to come in and and head coach for the red stars uh petroselli saying that he doesn't want so much pressure to be on pew he doesn't want her to have his team rely on her to score all the goals and have all of the offensive production and Penelope Hawking releases that pressure for pressure. Yeah. I think we're back to talking about North Carolina courage. We had to take Like I said, a pit stop because uh, Chicago was at slotted at the number seven pick right there. But uh, we've got North Carolina courage at number eight and number nine. And they went with Sydney Collins at number eight, the defender midfielder out of California university and number nine with Clara Robbins, the midfielder and forward out of Florida state university. So some interesting things that took place here uh, before we get into these actual uh, discussions about North Carolina's pick. They made a trade with Houston Dash, who were initially with the number eight pick. They sent Diana Ordonez over <laughs> to Houston Dash, I believe for an international spot as well, and an additional pick uh, in exchange for this number eight selection. And with all of that, they chose Sydney Collin out of California University. <laughs> Uh, we have to talk about the trade first, Sandra, because breaking the, news. Yeah, we have to talk about the the Diana Ordonez uh, going to Houston. I mean, this is a player you look at at Ordonez that was drafted to North Carolina just last year, had an incredible rookie season, partnered alongside Davinia and Caroline, notching so many goals. Uh, I, I can't even remember the stat right now, but so many of them with her head as well. This is a player that really helps your team score contribute from day one and I, I thought heading into this draft I Diana Ordonez wasn't even on my radar to be traded I thought for sure that she would be sticking around with North Carolina um, but this is a huge move Ordonez from Texas now she goes to Houston she'll be playing alongside Maria Sanchez in the front line Ebony Salmon think of that front line how fierce and dynamic it is going to be. Also, Mexico is not in the World Cup. So heading into the World Cup break, where the NWSL season will still be happening, Maria Sanchez is not going to the World Cup. Diana Ordonez is not going to the World Cup. They're going to have so much time to just dominate this NWSL league at that point. I love the fact that Ordonez is going to Houston. I think it's a big loss for North Carolina though. I do. Oh, I think it's a massive loss uh, for North Carolina. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not a little bit, uh, you know, confused by, you know, maybe some of the, the movement that took place uh, for the courage in, in, in this first round. Um, but gosh, I have to have having to sit here and smile through the fact that you said that Mexico is not going to the world cup. I'm like, Ow, I'm so sorry. Pain. I'm so sorry. I'm just kind of like, ouch, but you're not incorrect. In all of the pain, you're not incorrect. Uh, I think this is a huge move for Houston. And we had, for people who are keeping track, in our mock draft, we did have Houston going with a forward in this, in this election. Turns out they didn't make the pick. They just ended up making the trade for a target forward instead. So uh, good on, I think, good on for, for Houston for mm -hmm. um being able to continue to, you know, uh, add on to, to their roster, uh, but doing it in, in a trade uh, versus actually doing that in the draft. Let's 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 move on to uh, pick number ten, or we could talk about Claire Robbins a little bit. We chatted yeah. about her, saying that we felt that she was the most sort of NWSL, maybe midfield ready type of player mm -hmm. going into this round, um, dropping to number nine. We thought maybe she'd go a little bit higher, um, but North Carolina Courage, I think this might be their best pick of of, of, uh, of the three picks that they had in this in this first round. So shout out to them. I, and I, their first round. Yeah, I agree. Olivia Wingate, Cindy Collins, and then Clara Robbins. But those all those picks were six, eight, and nine. So pretty much in succession. Um, and 
for Claire Robbins. This is the third Florida State player drafted in this first round, the midfielder out of FSU. Um, she's also one that we thought was maybe going to go to Racing Louisville, yeah. but Racing Louisville hadn't had a pick at this point. Yeah. So it's up to Sean Nahas. He ends up snagging a player like Clara Robbins. Uh, we thought she would go to Racing Louisville because she played with Racing's W League team. Uh, but yeah, a, a great grab. I mean, with North Carolina on the board four times in that first round, I agree that Clara Robbins is their best pick so far at this point. Number 10, Kansas City Current already making a huge pick and a huge move in this draft. Send Lynn Williams to Gotham to get into that number two spot. Select Michelle Cooper. And then they chose again, at number 10, Alexa Spancher out of University of Virginia. We did have her going in the first round. It sounds like we just missed out in our mock draft in terms of the slot and, and location in terms of where she would get selected. But I like this move. Really versatile player heading to Kansas City. And I just can't help but look at the current and say, God, they just stay winning. In yeah. this offseason. I mean, the fact that you lose Lynn Williams, but you get Michelle Cooper and then a player like Spanstra, who who comes back to the Midwest. She's out of Michigan, has been playing at Virginia uh, five years there. But now she goes to Kansas City, um, a goal scorer. That, that's Spanstra for you. 37 career goals, 34 career assists. I think this is an impact player. She can uh, I'll give you a pun here, Sandra. She can make a splash immediately. <laughs> At Kansas City. Um, Love yeah, a water pun. I, I think that Kansas City was incredibly strategic um, heading into this draft. We saw, uh, I got to talk to some of the, the PR people out of Kansas City this morning, and I was like, hey, are you guys ready for today? And they kind of gave me a giggle, gave me a nod. I mean, yeah. they knew that they had so many moving parts coming, um, and, and that's exactly what we saw. And we're only at pick 10 out of 48 for the, the entire day. Number 11, North Carolina Courage closing out their first round with another forward. Going with Haley Hopkins in, in this uh, slot. And I got to say, I do, I do like this pick for them. I think going into this draft class, I think you could probably target around five forwards coming in to this uh, draft day and say these are probably like the top five forwards coming in to this draft class. And I think that includes, uh, you know, somebody – like a Penelope Hawkins that, that included somebody uh, like an Alexa Spanstra, an Izzy D. Aquila uh, Hopkins is, is, is in that equation alongside probably Messiah Bright as well. So to see Hopkins out of University of Virginia go to North Carolina Courage, uh, we were curious if maybe the Courage would have selected Spanstra, trying to look for that that sort of close mm -hmm. local tie a little bit, um, state to state here, but uh, going, going with Hopkins after the current take Spanstra just ahead of them. Yeah, back-to-back -back UVA picks uh, for Casey and then North Carolina. I mean, I like this player, Hopkins. Um, uh, we talked about North Carolina. This was their fourth pick, their fourth and final pick, which is still so many picks in the first round. And I think Hopkins is one of uh, the better ads that they could do. But you look at the players that they got in Olivia Wingate, Sydney Collins, Clara Robbins, and then Haley Hopkins. These are all attacking players um, that can score goals and do it immediately. I mean, North Carolina – is is stacking up it's it's giving me kansas city in 2021 <laughs> vibes uh with what they're doing the players that they're getting and really versatile players that can rotate and pick in and around different spots on the pitch number 12 we made it to the end of the first round let's talk a little bit about portland thorns making this selection to close out round one of the draft they go with a forward izzy d aquila out of santa clara university we had izzy going a little bit higher yeah. again when we weren't too sure if jenna neischwager was going to declare for the draft and how things were going to look and uh she ends up going in this first round to portland thorn so portland yeah. i think walking away with a pretty good draft two good players coming out of this first round for them i I'm going to be honest with Portland getting Reno Reyes uh, defender out of Alabama and then Izzy out of Santa Clara, uh, the forward uh, former Gatorade national player of the year. These are two in my mind, top five players that could have gone top five in this draft and Portland ended up grabbing them uh, five for Reyes and then 12 for Diakia. Uh, but I, I really like this. I mean, West coast conference rookie. So the fact that Izzy was a player that could grow throughout her collegiate career, she started strong and they can, she continued to get better, grow into that leadership role. I think it'll be a nice fit at Portland and, and to kind of see where she fits in, uh, maybe get a little bit more playing time than Reyes, just considering positionally on the pitch higher up, uh, you're willing to take a little bit more chances. But I mean, this is one of the players in Diakia that we thought would go higher for sure. And and when we look at the top 12 picks, Sandra, I, I, 
I think that that is kind of what surprised me. Some of the players that didn't get their name called in these top 12 picks. I'm looking at yeah. someone like Messiah Bright. I'm looking at uh, Riley Parker Matt. Matt yeah, um, Riley out Riley of Parker. Not, with yes, you. exactly. Riley. Matt no, that's another. Like, out of I was Alabama. talking about top fours yeah. coming in. That's one of those players. Yeah. yeah, that I would maybe think about. Sort of say, here's a handful of fours who are probably like really, really uh, strong to enter this this first round. But uh, that's how draft day goes. I mean, there's players who end up dropping into mm -hmm. lower spots that maybe you're kind of like, wow, can't believe that this ended up uh, uh, happening. But uh, I just want to say. Thanks again to everybody, uh, you know, post break in the second half of this episode uh, for, for joining us live. We're going live while the draft is still going live. We, we had to get some of these first reactions out because we just didn't want to lose anything or, you know, and hopefully retain it all. We're still here in Philly together uh, yes. talking about all things NWSL draft. Uh, we've got so much coverage for you all still right now on CBA Sports HQ. You can catch the end of the third round and the start of the fourth round of the draft on Paramount Plus. You can go to the sports tab and find a great title card that says NWSL draft. You can hit that and you can watch the remainder of the NWSL draft. We've got all kinds of great content for you on cbssports.com. Myself and shout out to my boy Chuck Booth are running yes. the live blog on .com for you so you can Keep up to date on every single pick that's happened. We've got all kinds of content out there. If you want to go back and look at our mock draft and tell us how we were wrong, or if you want to go and take a look at the rules and how things made sense, uh, get uh, uh, everything you need to know about Alyssa Thompson. We got a piece out there with her as well. So uh, check out all everything out on all, all the CBS Sports platforms um, as you can. So we have to continue to watch this NWSL draft. Now we will have more on the NWSL draft on our later episode. Probably, probably thinking about grades. We're gonna be grading this yeah. draft, so make sure you tune in. Winners, losers, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, players that went higher that maybe we weren't expecting. The impact they're gonna have um, and more everything, trades everything. apparently. <laughs> more trades to and come. more trades apparently <laughs> to come. So listen, we appreciate you all. You all are rock stars. Thank you for joining us live tonight. On Attacking Third, you can download, follow, listen to us anywhere you get your podcast. Make sure you watch us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Attacking Third. Subscribe so that you never miss whenever we go live. And uh, leave us a like, a follow, comments. We want to hear from you. And uh, Lisa and I are going to catch the remainder of this draft. And I don't know. We're going to eat our cheesecake. Thanks. Maybe go, so go much, wild. Amy. Yeah, we're going to go wild <laughs> out in Philly. Philly girl's going to tell me all about uh, Philadelphia tonight. Sandra Reda and Lisa Roman. 